Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. Today I want to have a revisit on the Anafi. I've had it six months. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see where we are and what I think of it after six months. So, when I first got this drone, you probably see, if you've seen my original review, I was a bit up and down with it because of the price point and other things that it didn't have when it was launched. Like, you had to pay £16 for the app, which was resolved. You didn't have a return to home height adjustable resolved and some other little bug, bits and bugs that it had that have now been resolved so there was a deal on this you could pick it up for 450 quid from Amazon a little bit ago it's now tends to seems to have gone up to 4, 4, 499 or 519 still at the price I think it's a great drone I think the drone itself has a fantastic camera do not be put off by this thing because people say it looks light and a little bit toy. The fact it's light is not a problem because this thing cuts wind probably as well as anything else I've flown. It is light, but it cuts wind. The camera gimbal is fantastic. You'll see from the footage that I put up at the end, I filmed, I put a couple of two minute clips up so you can see what the film, what the footage looks like. I think it looks fantastic. There's a massive difference between this and the Hubs and Zeno that you've seen me review. And when it was 449, there was only £90 difference. I am going to do a comparison video between this and the Xeno shortly. But probably wait for the weather to get a little bit better. Because the weather at the minute makes your video footage look really grainy. And I wanted to try and give them both a fair shout. So, I do love it. You, the quirks and stuff that people go on about, like the fact the SD card's buried under there in a little kind of old-fashioned mobile phone type mount. Doesn't bother me in the slightest, you get used to it. The little things about this drone, you get used to it. One of the things that when I bought this drone, I, I, I didn't worry about obstacle avoidance, I don't use it anyway. I, I tend to turn it off. But one of the things that did worry me about this drone was it didn't have a three axis gimbal, so it only had two axis and the third axis was on stabilisation. Absolutely, now don't even think about it when I fly it. Unless you yaw it ridiculously quick, you're not going to tell. And even if you yaw something really quick like the Mavic Air, you're still going to get judder on, your, on the three-axis gimbal because it can't cope with it. So that would not put me off buying this drone anymore. In fact, nothing puts me off buying this drone. The other com comments I've seen is people say this is a toy-grade controller. It looks like a toy-grade. It feels like a toy-grade. I have no idea where that's coming from. The sticks are superb on it. The resolution's amazing. It's heavy, which is the only thing I would say about it. Why it's so heavy, I don't really know. It's probably because it's got a really big battery because I've never charged this. It's only had the one charge since I got it. Um, connectivity, fantastic. The app works fantastic. You now get the apps for 99 pence. So if you want the follow me mode and the other app, you can get, sorry, the follow me mode and the waypoints. 99 pence each now, it does, it's a no brainer. The follow me mode works well on this. Is it... It isn't to be compared to something like the Mavic Pro. To the Mavic Air, I can't really split them. I prefer flying this. And I think maybe the camera looks like... I don't know. I did a video not long ago saying... And I don't think I made my mind up then either. I don't know. I chop and change. I enjoy flying them both equally. This is really, really quiet. So if you want to fly this in, the quiet, in an area where you don't want to make too much noise, this is the one you want to use. Mm. The controller on this, I think, is, is as good as the DJI controllers. I don't think there's any difference in them. I think this flies just as well with this controller. Batteries are now read, readily available. The form factor is decent. It's very light. It's easy to carry. And you can get one of these box cases, which I reviewed earlier, for about 25 quid. I think it was less than £18. Pounds. So, to me, this is a winner all day long. And if you've thought about getting one... Watch a video footage I've got coming up at the end. It was filmed a little bit ago because I say it's really grainy outside today. But if you're thinking about it, think no more. Just go get one because it's worth the money. Don't be put off by things you've seen on the internet about people saying oh, the controller looks bad or the props look a bit dodgy. Unless these people have flown it, you know, make your mind up from watching people that review it. That's exactly what I did at first. I watched, them, I watched a couple of reviews before I bought this. I took them with a pinch of salt, but all I wanted to know is what these props were like. I had an issue thinking about the gimbal, and I knew it had the other issues. So I wasn't going into this blind. I just think it was overpriced at £650. But now at 500 just over 500 it's a fantastic price. I think for 650 you get the fly combo, which comes with extra batteries. So, yeah, 
it's a good drone. And Parrot seems to have gone out of the drone market now, which is a bit of a shame. They overpriced this thing at the start, so they're coming at 450 on this. They'd have had a winner on the hand because it would have competed so well with the Spark, but they made it 250 quid more than the Spark, and that's where the problems escalated. So, thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy the video footage that's coming up.